evening and welcome back to another Celica video, my 1991 Toyota Celica GT. And I think we're on the verge of getting this running as it should. So since uh, the last video I bled the clutch again because there was still some air in, in the system I managed to get, get some more air out and the clutch pedal seems to be alright I don't know what I don't know about the biting point and I also bled the brakes so I made sure and they, 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 they seem a bit I did take it on a, on a road test and they do, they do feel better and it's still not, not quite 100% but definitely an improvement Anyway, on to the main topic of this particular video, which is to get this running as it should. So I found this uh, repair manual, factory repair manual, and this should help us diagnose a problem. So we'll start there, check clutch or brakes, they're alright, they're not causing any problem. Check for vacuum leaks, uh, no, I'm not aware of any. Check air filter, we put a brand new one in, so that's okay. Now next thing, check diagnosis system and I'll show you what I found. Now this handily shows you how to bring up uh, error codes. Now obviously being a 1991 car it doesn't have OBD2 like uh, newer cars are. So otherwise you'd have, you'd have plugged your laptop in and got your error codes. And um, I'll show you how, how, to, how it's done. So as we did when setting the ignition timing we need to show out terminals E1 which is that one and TE1 and there's a special service tool for this for, from Toyota but a piece, piece of electrical wire do, will do the job and that's that done and uh, we'll go inside the car Now I'll just quickly explain before I do it uh, the the error codes are two digit codes so what you do is you turn you turn the ignition on but you don't start the engine or crank it and you see the engine management light flash a certain number of times it'll do a certain number of flashes quick pause and some more flashes and that's your first code then there'll be a bit of a bigger pause and before it uh, brings up the next code so we'll just turn it on just turn the ignition on Count the flashes. One, two, one, two, three, four. And the next error code will come up. One, two, one, two, three, four. So it's the same code again. So that's code two, four. So we'll look it up and we'll see what that is. So we've got our list of diagnostics codes and remember it was 24 which was that one and it says air intake temperature sensor signal so an open or short in the air take uh, in the intake air temperature sensor so we'll go over to car and we'll have a look now this is our air intake temperature sensor so what we can do is uh, we can actually test this and um, we just we just measure the resistance on it so we can do a quick quick test to see see if it's a duff or not so I'll pull that off and we'll get the multimeter up to it so this is our air intake temperature sensor and it gives pinouts to ECU as well I know we're going out of sequence with the diagnostic so what we'll do is We'll go to check air intake temperature and so we can do do a quick test. Now I've got my multimeter ready, so I've got to put you guys down. Um, we'll see what reading we get. Well, before we do that, we'll just uh, we'll just read off now. The ambient temperature is about twenty degrees centigrade. So we're probably looking at about about just under four kilo ohms for the resistance. So. We'll measure the resistance and we'll see what we get. Right, I hope you can see this. So we'll just uh, take a measurement. 
getting 2.73 which is probably about right between 2 and 4 so just under 3 so I think I think this sensor is actually fine so what we'll do is clean clean it up, clean up the connections and um, we'll put it back in the car and I think the, the actual sensor itself is fine so there must be something else that's triggered that code so that's the sensor reinstalled uh, I sprayed some uh, contact cleaner on the connections just to give it a, a chance or hopefully that'll keep it in a tip top condition so what I'm going to do next is to uh, clear, clear the uh, diagnostic code and there's the information here and it tells you which uh, fuse to pull out and we'll do that, it's the uh, EFI fuse so we'll go over to the fuse box and it's the one it's the one next to the battery and it's that one, the EFI which is that one, 15 amps so I'll just get that pulled out and just leave it for, for at least a minute okay I've got some pliers so I'll just pull the fuse out leave it for 60 seconds and I'll come back to you after those 60 seconds have elapsed right the 60 seconds are up I've put the fuse back in so let's see if we get any any code see if it's uh, got rid of that code so just turn the ignition on well actually that looks quite promising because the engine management light's just constantly flashing so I think we've managed to clear the error codes so I'm going to take it on a road test I'll do that off camera in case it, in case this little problem hasn't worked and um, we'll see if it, it's uh, fixed the problem unfortunately that wasn't the easy fix the test drive was not a success it did feel a bit better but it was still it was still bad so at least we can eliminate the uh, diagnostic cause I did I did check it again and it's not come back so we're okay um so moving on from check diagnos diagnosis system check ignition spark now we know that's all good because we've uh, we did that in the previous video we we replaced a lot of bits and it's all it's sparking on all four cylinders so I'm happy with that check ignition timing we've already done that in a previous video check fuel pressure okay so let's see how we do that so there it is, it shows you how to do it, you short a couple of terminals, there's it F, P and B plus turn the ignition on um, check see if there's pressure from the, the fuel from the fuel uh, pipe, you're from the top of the filter so we'll do that next Unfortunately I can't do the uh, full test because I don't have a fuel pressure gauge so just quickly check this hose, the one that comes from the filter and there's definitely pressure in there so I'm happy that there's fuel pressure So the next thing is uh, check injectors So we'll, uh, we'll, give, we'll give that a miss, I mean it's, it's running so injectors can't be all that bad uh, so we'll just We'll skip that for now. Check spark plugs. It had new spark plugs. I've not checked compression and valve clearances. So I'm not sure about the the TV's valve. I don't know if that applies to this engine. The 3 GSE. Okay. Check EFI electronic circuit using volt or meter so let's have a look see if we can do, do that well I think I'm going to leave it there I've just eliminated a few problems with it running and we know it's not that code but that uh, engine warning light flashing when you turn the ignition on is a bit worrying so I think I'll need to investigate that so that's it for this video hope you enjoyed this one with a uh, Eliminated a few, uh, few uh, impossibles from the equation. Obviously, what's left must be the answer. It could, it could well be the the injectors. Obviously, the car's been stood four years. I did put some Redex in, so I might just tip a bit more petrol in and chuck in another bottle of Redex. See if that cleans it out. I might just uh, do that. Anyway, please remember to like, subscribe, 
share and ring the notification bell if you want to uh, get notified of any of new videos coming up. As ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you there. Thank you.